Brother Eric's sermon text will be from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 3 and 4. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel and sanctification and honor. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with Brother Eric as he comes up, that everyone will be encouraged, those who are listening from the CDs that we make and that are here today. I pray that you would be with him. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, brethren. I know we've, uh, I can confess that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This time at the renewal is very precious to us. This, uh, this time we consider this renewal to have actually changed us. So your, uh, your fellowship in these meetings is appreciated. And um, boy, with an introduction like that, I just, I, I don't, I don't want to let anybody down. So I'm going to have to confess, though, that I'm not going to have any confidence in my flesh. Um, I'm just going to rejoice in Christ Jesus and, and worship God in the spirit. And I know that that's what we'll be able to do together here. Uh, the topic uh, that I have chosen and was assigned to me uh, is from First Thessalonians. We're going to be talking about what God wants. I, I mean, that sounds like that I could I could spend a lot of time talking about what God wants, and that's what I want to that's what I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God wants. Not really interested in what men want from me. I'm interested in what God wants from me. <clears throat> so what, when we're talking about the will of God, what exactly are we talking about? Let's first of all, let's get this straight, okay? <clears throat> the will of God is what he has committed to do. Um, it's what God's inclined to do. It's what God's determined to do. The will of God is what he's chosen to do. It's what he desires. It's what he takes pleasure in. God has pleasures, brethren. God doesn't... He, he loves things. He hates things. God is a God who wants something, and he wants something from you. <clears throat> he does not want to condemn you. God wills that you would be sanctified, and he has actually provided everything needed for this process to be successful. And not only that, he's done it so, so much so that you, he, it can actually be worked out in an environment that is completely contrary to God himself. In a fallen creature, in, a, in this vile body, you can actually give yourself to the Lord, brethren. That's, that's the message that I have for you, is that God wills that you would be sanctified. So God's will is what he's purposed to do. He said, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I've purposed it, I will also do it. It was because God willed that the earth was created. It was because God willed that the earth was flooded. It's because God willed that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were chosen. It was God, that thought originated with God. <clears throat> It was also because God willed that, these, that this nation of Israel, small as it was, would go down into Egypt and spend 400 years in Egypt in slavery and bondage. It was also because God willed that they would be delivered out of that situation. <clears throat> it was because God willed that he determined to give these people that he brought out a law. It's because God willed that, that these people actually were punished because they had broken that law and brought into into captivity, into the Babylonian captivity. See, there's nothing really that, that has occurred that God hasn't had his hand upon. It's, it's really everything that we see as time is, is unfolded, it's really God's eternal purpose that's kind of coming together. <clears throat> so when we, particularly when we think about Christ, the word being made flesh, it was actually because God wanted it to happen. <clears throat> then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it's written of me, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. <clears throat> 
So it was because God willed that the word was made flesh. And it was because God willed that his son would be offered up. In the garden, Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. And he knew exactly what he was saying when he said that. <clears throat> so I'm saying that your salvation is actually because God wants... People are saved because God wants them to be saved. This is the kind of God that we are pr proclaiming here. This is the kind of God that we're proclaiming fellowship with and nearness to. Is a God who actually wants men to be saved. <clears throat> well, I say, what shall I render to the Lord for all these benefits towards me? People often ask, why do bad things happen to good people? But I think a better question is to ask is, why does God have anything good for a people who are altogether unholy? Why, why, does, why do good things happen to bad people? That's even a better question. <clears throat> See, God's, our salvation is because God wants you to be saved, brethren. If we're presenting a God who doesn't desire your salvation, this is not, this isn't God. This is not God. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to be holy. The will of God is your sanctification. <clears throat> in matters of salvation, God is actually all in. He's given everything that he has that you would be saved. There, there, there hasn't been anything withheld from you. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, with him, freely give us all things? <clears throat> so God's desire, brethren, if you can get one thing, it's that God wants you to be saved. This is what God wants. I can come to a God like that. In trouble, I can call out upon a God that wants to save me. And you can too. <clears throat> if you're being tempted, you can call upon God and he, he wants you to be saved. He's looking to uphold you. <clears throat> so then, brethren, as, as we have believed and have turned to God from idols, that's where we are. I'm not talking to a people who doesn't believe God. <clears throat> you've turned to God from idols and you've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. <clears throat> I can see that you're, uh, you, that you're waiting for his son from heaven. So what should we do in the meantime? Now that we've been obeyed from the heart, we've believed, what, what are we doing now? Are we just waiting? Are we just kind of sitting around twiddling, twiddling our thumbs until something happens? Well, the will of God is your sanctification. <clears throat> now that you've been justified and forgiven of all your trespasses, what now shall we do? Now is life about finding out really what God's plan is for you, for your particular life? Finding out all the particulars. Is that, when we talk about knowing the will of God, is that what we're talking about? Knowing whether you should be a doctor or a dentist. Knowing whether you should live in Missouri or Delaware. Knowing, is this, it, it, should we, should, should, what kind of car should I buy? Maybe, which kind of dog should I get? How many kids should I have? There's all kinds of questions that people are presented with all the time, and they struggle with these things, and they don't want to violate, and I, I understand some of these things, people have genuine concerns about violating what God wants for them. And that's something that is, that's legitimate, it's genuine, and I want to do those things that are pleasing in his sight too. But I'm, I'm saying first and foremost that God wants you to be sanctified. Amen. Above all else. <clears throat> so when we talk about the will of God, <clears throat> we're really not talking about what the will of God is for your life. What the will of God is for you is that you would be sanctified. Amen. That you would be holy. That you would be set apart. That you would be a peculiar people. That you would be zealous for good works. For the Lord. And in everything else you do, you can actually sanctify what you do, as a matter of fact. 
<clears throat> so when we talk about the will of God, we must not be casual. We have to understand that the will of God is actually connected to Christ coming in the flesh and offering himself as a sacrifice for sin. So the will of God is not something that we can deal with casually. <clears throat> Everything that, that God, well, really, the will of God is connected, to, as I said, to this death and, 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 and the resurrection. So we have to then think about the will of God in those terms. We have to think, well, is, is God really, did Jesus have to die for you to become a dentist? Did, do you need a risen Christ to buy this kind of puppy? Is that really why God died? There's, see, there's matters that are just really too low. People have to th stop thinking so small about what God wants for them. <clears throat> People need to be told that God wants them to be holy and separate. <clears throat> the will of God is this, even your sanctification. I'm saying that the great Jehovah is committed to your sanctification. God is inclined to purify you. That's saying, I'm saying that God is like, he's leaning over, waiting for you. He just, he's looking for somebody to purify. That's you, brethren. He's looking to purify you. <clears throat> the Almighty is determined to cleanse you. Our Father in heaven, he takes pleasure in making us holy. This is something that he, he this, is, this is his will, is your sanctification. God desires that you would be clean and that you keep yourself clean. So what exactly does that mean? <clears throat> well, that means that God is looking for someone whose will is actually aligned with his will. Somebody... Somebody that wants the same thing, same things that he wants. That's where you, that's, that's what I see in you, brother. And that's why this is a sweet fellowship that we have. Because if, as you walk with the Lord, he changes what you want. Let's say it like the scripture says it. As brother Al would say, let's button this thing down. <clears throat> that God works in you both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. So as you're working out your salvation, God's working in you. So you're working out what God's working in. How about that? This is the process of sanctification. That's where... <clears throat> what a glorious thing to consider, that the God of heaven actually wants to make me holy. That's what I want. I want to be holy too. I don't want to be like the world and perish, be burned with fire at the end. I want to stand clean before my God. And that's what he wants. The will of God is your sanctification. God is looking for someone to uphold. He's looking for a saint that's being tempted that he can supply grace in the time of need. So you're being tempted. This is a oh, perfect candidate. Here's, here's someone for God to work in right here. Somebody he can uphold by his strong right hand. That's why Christ is living, brethren. He's living to supply you grace from on high. That's it. He's... Amen. God is really not sitting back looking for a reason uh, to fault you with. He's not waiting for you to fail. <clears throat> He's actually running to your help. I like this, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. That's why I... See, the devil, it seems like he's pretty quick, but he's walking around. He's walking around. As, he's just walking around like a roaring lion. But God is actually running. He can get there faster. So uh, you call upon him, and he'll, he, he'll come to your aid, brethren, won't he? Our experience will testify of that. Our spirit bears witness with his spirit that we're a child of God in that. <clears throat> and that we can abstain from fornication. Praise God. <clears throat> God is looking for a heart to uphold. 
That is to say that the Lord will make a way of escape out of every temptation that you may be able to bear it. He won't leave one temptation there for a saint that's going to overtake you. See, the will of God is your sanctification. So that means he has, he's set up all, all necessary means. He's given you his spirit. He's done all things needed that you would be able to overcome. <clears throat> so this is good news for somebody who wants to be sanctified. It's also good news uh, for somebody who's making strides in the kingdom of God. See, there's always, there's this, as long as we're in the world, there is a danger of falling back. It doesn't have to be falling back all the way to the pit, maybe just stopping where you are. Which, there is no such thing as stopping where you are. As soon as you stop, you've really backslid at that point. But that's a danger that everyone faces while they're in the world. We're living in an environment of, of jeopardy right now. This is a place where, where temptation and, and um, well, sin reigns in the world. So if you've been making strides in the kingdom, you've been able to see further than you have before, you've overcome things that once overcame you. But you're afraid because maybe you're in, you're in this evil world, you're in a, you're in a vile body, you've got a earthen vessel that you've got to contain you get dragging around this old man still this is a this is a serious situation <clears throat> if it were just up to us we would certainly fall back but i'm saying that god is committed to keeping you as you're committed to sanctifying him in your heart as you set the lord apart and your heart he'll keep you from falling that's what he's able to do. He's able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. God is not looking for a reason to condemn. He's looking for a reason to uphold. God's not waiting for you to lose what he has given you. He's, he's providing you with resources so that you would keep, or as our text says, possess. That's, that's what he's talking about, possessing your vessel in sanctification and honor. That, that implies that you've actually received something. That means that you've got something from God worth keeping. Now you've got to keep it. <clears throat> Sanctification involves both putting off those things which would defile and keeping those things with the, with the Lord has committed to you. <clears throat> God's will is that you would be sanctified. And not just a little bit sanctified, not just kind of set apart, sanctified wholly. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is good news. Sanctification affects your entire person. I'm talking about not just thinking rightly, but doing rightly. If salvation doesn't manifest itself by what you do, I'm saying that you have not received a salvation that's from the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> if you're not walking in paths of righteousness, then this is not the salvation that the Savior came to give you. You've been believing on another Jesus because Jesus will actually change you so that you can walk in the truth. <clears throat> so when we talk about sanctification, let's first step back and think about this whole enterprise of salvation, this whole project, this whole grand uh, project of God that he has been working on of old. It's a large work. He's, he's the king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Our God's a working God, I like to think about it. He's not a God who sits back, he's one who's working. He's involved in the work. <clears throat> and salvation can be broken down into at least three parts or, or phases, you know, this is uh, my opinion, so you'll have to, I'll, I'll preclude it with that, and you can either, you can take it, or you can, maybe we can talk about it later, I'd, I'd like to talk about it some more. <clears throat> so these three parts, the first of which being justification, all, all of salvation has to do with being saved from sin, that's what Jesus is, it was sent for, he's He's sent to save his people from their sins. That's, that's who he is. So all of salvation has to do with this matter of saving people, saving men from sin. 
Justification is the deliverance or escaping the penalty of sin. That's when the death of Christ is effectually applied to a person. You could, I like to think about it like that. Then Jesus' blood is effectually applied to, your, to you, that you're justified by his blood. <clears throat> then there's sanctification or salvation from the power of sin. This is effectually availing yourself to the reign of a resurrected Christ. You are, you are actually making yourself available so that God can give you resources by Christ Jesus, whom what he was dead but is alive forevermore. Sanctification requires a risen Lord. And the third of which being glorification or salvation uh, from the presence of sin. That is, in glory, no sin anywhere. That sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds like, <clears throat> praise God, get rid of this stuff. I'm tired of sin. Tired of, of it in me. I'm tired of seeing it all the time. I'm, I'm, well, even so, come Lord Jesus. I'm ready for... <clears throat> and glorification is when the work that has been done by Christ will be effectually revealed as being effective. That's, glorification is going to be when everything that God has, has been doing will be clearly seen. It's effective now, but you'll see it then. You'll see that what God is doing in his people is actually, it actually works. That we're not sitting around here just talking about ideas. This, this is not vain philosophy. We're talking about people actually being able to be made holy in an unholy environment, in a vile body, that's what the Christ, that's what the Christ is working in his people. <clears throat> now, of these three works, justification, sanctification, glorification, men are most involved, in my opinion, in sanctification. <clears throat> of course, God and Christ are the primary workers. At the end, the whole song will be salvation unto God which sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. That's the, all of heaven is going to be focused on Christ, the worker. <clears throat> However, you are actually involved in sanctification. This text is a call for your own involvement. If you're, if there is no salvation that God has that men are not involved in. This is, this is, and that's what sanctification is. It's, it's your, this is, you're, you're walking in, in what Christ has actually accomplished for you. <clears throat> when a person is, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry here. So when we, when we speak about sanctification, we're, we're speaking about purity, separateness. It's the act or process of being made holy. There is, of course, an initial work of sanctification done when a person is joined to the Lord. Scripture says it like this, ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. When a person is joined to the Lord, they're changed. They have new desires, given a new heart, given a new spirit, given a new man. They're separated from this world. Not that they should be, that they are. That's a reality that we actually walk in in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Not that he should be, that he is. <coughs> Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. However, when you're sanctified, the work has just begun. <laughs> Sanctification just started when you were sanctified. It's, it's, got a, it's got a continuing effect to it. I like to think of sanctification as the process of affirming your justification. You're actually working out what God has worked in. I've already said this. So you're actually, we're actually, as we walk with the Lord, displaying what righteousness actually is. Uh, this is, this shouldn't be, we shouldn't be scared to say these kinds of things. We live in a world, though, that has so far disconnected what, Christ actually does in a person, they say that, well, we're just like everybody else, just forgiven. Is that really the Jesus that we have come to? God forbid. God forbid. You could get that from a book. 
You don't need, you don't need a savior for, for, to be just the same. What's the point of that? <clears throat> sanctification is the process of affirming your justification, not creating it. You're not creating your, your own righteousness. You're actually displaying what God has worked in you. Scripture says it like this. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So you're actually walking in Christ. You're displaying God's own righteousness in your life. This is a, what shall we render to the Lord for all these benefits? He's actually chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief in the truth. This is, a, this is a good God we have. How exactly would a person know that they've been made righteous unless they walked in paths of righteousness? How would you know? You wouldn't. That's what I'm saying. But sanctification is the process of, that's when those things are kind of worked out. God's righteousness necessitates your sanctification. God could not just declare a people righteous and then have no fruit to show for it. God is righteous, holy so, and his person necessitates your sanctification. Men must appropriate and walk in holiness in order to see the Lord. Making an unholy people into a holy not only required an initial purging, but an ongoing work and a living savior. It's not as though God starts the work and now you take the reins. It's actually the spirit within you that's doing the work. <clears throat> we know that justification is by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what, that's what the scripture declares. That's, what, that's how it actually is. Is that you're declared righteous by what Jesus did on your behalf. By his death that he died for your sins. By his stripes we are healed. That's what the scripture says. <clears throat> but the full appropriation of Christ's sacrifice requires that Jesus not only die, but that he rise again. And effectually mediate his sacrifice to you. Now that See, now we've got to have kind of the blood applied to your person. We've got to have the blood sprinkled upon you. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled or justified to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's sanctification. You'll be sent, you're, you're, we're actually connected with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. This is a, what a marvelous benefit that God has given us. <clears throat> And our, our sanctification is what manifests that connection, that we've actually been united and agree with the Lord and walk together with him in holiness. <clears throat> See, sanctification, as I said, is a work in which both we're, we're actually co-laborers together with God in. We're working together with God in the work. Or maybe a better way to say it is that he's called us to it. Scripture says you haven't, been called to uncleanness, but unto holiness. <clears throat> so there are some things that you're doing as you're being sanctified. Let, here, here's some things that you're doing as, this is as you're being sanctified by God, because it's, it's God who sanctifies, just like it's God who justifies. You're not the one that works it out. It's God's will that you would be sanctified. <clears throat> So here's some things that you're doing as you're sanctified. You're running the race that's set before you. You're fighting the good fight of faith. You're praying in the Holy Ghost. You're believing on the Lord Jesus. You're looking unto the author and finisher of, our, of your faith. You're striving according to his working, which he worketh in you. These are things that you're given to do. This is, you, are you bored? You shouldn't be bored. You've got a lot to do. There's a lot of work to be done. <clears throat> You're holding forth the word of life. You're abiding in him. You're keeping that which is committed to you by the Holy Ghost. You're walking in the light as he is in the light. You're pressing towards the mark. You're not quenching the spirit. Sanctification is not boring, is it? 
Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. I think that, that the church that we have on our hands has failed miserably at living in the gospel. They preach a word that seems to be disassociated with the way in which they live. But that is not the true gospel. That is not the real Jesus. The real Jesus actually affects the way in which you live. Jesus actually works together with you as you're running and walking and abiding and fighting and striving. <clears throat> and as you're doing those things, running, walking, all those things and more, that was just a few things from the scripture, God is doing some things too. You interested to know what God's doing? I know I am. I'm going to tell you even if you're not. Here's what God's doing. He's forgiving you all your sins. He's calling you unto holiness. He's leading you in paths of righteousness. This is sanctification, brethren. This is what God is doing for you as you're being sanctified. He's guiding you in all truth. He's washing you by the word. He's cleansing you from all unrighteousness. He's purifying your heart by faith. He's transforming you by the renewing of your mind. He's keeping what you've committed unto him against that day. He's revealing his son in you. He's enlightening your eyes. He's delivering you from every evil work. You want to be delivered from evil work? Ask the Lord. He'll deliver you from every one of them. Amen. He's preserving you blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus. He's conforming you into the image of his son. And there's something that he's not doing while he's doing this too. You want to know what he's not doing? I'm going to tell you anyway. <clears throat> he's not imputing your trespasses unto you. He's actually showing you mercy. Praise God for his mercy, brethren. I'm telling you right now that God is merciful and gracious and abundant in goodness and truth. I'm trying to tell you that God wants you to be sanctified. That you can give yourself to him and he will sanctify you. <clears throat> so can we see that God is really not looking for a reason to condemn us? God is looking for a reason to work in you. He is committed to your salvation. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. I want to think about abstaining and possessing before, before we close here. <clears throat> I know it's probably getting close to time here and it's after lunch, so I'm going to try to be loud and make sure everybody's awake when this is all done. <clears throat> because I'm telling you right now, the people of God have got to abstain from fornication. No fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God. Period. Not one. Not a single fornicator. You've got to abstain from fornication. And I'm telling you right now that if you lose what God has given you, don't count on getting into glory. You've got to possess your vessel and sanctification and honor. God cleansed you. Stay clean. Amen. Abstaining from, forni from fornication. <clears throat> fornication as all sin starts in the mind. It begins with wanting the wrong things. And at this stage, this lust stage, is when sin has got to be handled. You can't wait any longer. Once it, it, it'll boil up and flow out. It's got, sin has got to be handled at this lust stage. It's got, you got to put it to death before it, you give it any, any... Can't crouch at your door, brethren. Don't let it stay outside. Kick, get it out. Get it out of the house. Fornication is a category of sexual sins that are of a particularly base order. Very, it's a very... You don't commit fornication on accident. It's not like stepping on a slug or something like that. This is something that's done and you know about it. <clears throat> and it's a particularly, uh, fornication is a particularly defiling type of sin as well. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. So you defile yourself. <clears throat> and of course, true to the context of the entire New Covenant, the definition, I guess, of fornication has kind of expanded as well because 
there's a, there's a text in Hebrews, uh, Hebrews tra- chapter 12, talking about Esau. Here's what it said. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Fornication not only has to do with sexual immorality, but it has to do with spiritual adultery. The people of God can't be given themselves to anything other than the Lord. You cannot cannot be buying into anything else other than what the Lord is selling you. It's the only thing that's really worth something in the end anyway. Brethren, abstain from fornication. And if we have been um, given something in Christ, it's a necessity that we partake of it. And as we're partaking, we are actually possessing. That's, those two things are united together because we know in the, in the kingdom, if you, don't, if you don't use what you've been given, it just creates worms and it's no good anymore. So you're possessing your vessel in sanctification and honor. Your vessel, of course, is your body, just as... Jesus uh, told Ananias that Paul was a chosen vessel to bear Christ's name before the Gentiles and kings and all the children of Israel. Now, in terms of your vessel and in the kingdom of God, it's what God had actually put in Paul that set him apart. As Paul yielded himself to the work of Christ, it was what Christ did in Paul that caused him to be holy and righteous. It was how the vessels were actually used. It wasn't the vessel itself. It, the vessel was holy because of how it, would, how it was intended to be used. <clears throat> so you keep your vessel pure. Amen. God has, gun, has done too much for you to give what you have, what you have to the world. Well, I charge you by the grace of God to keep those good things which have been committed to you. Possess your vessel, brethren. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Don't be given your thoughts and affections or your body to any other thing. Give yourself wholly to the Lord. Well, brethren, as I tried to declare to you, God desires your sanctification and if you have found that this is your desire which I'm sure you have this is a bit of good news Um, now we can work together and with the Lord in perfecting holiness so as the temptation rises up you don't really have to look that far and the Lord the Lord Jesus is he's right there to uphold you he his will is your sanctification As you flee from evil, he will transform you, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, brethren, if you find something that's dead within yourself, you bury it. If you find something that's alive, you feed it, and you keep that thing which the Lord has committed to you. Don't let uh, competing influences rise up within you. Put them down. Give yourself wholly to the Lord. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. 